morning. <laughs> We're on 87.9. If you can't hear us, honk. Hey, all right. That worked well. Um, this is our second week of drive-in church. We appreciate you being here. Like I said, we're on 87.9 FM. We have an offering box up here if you want to give an offering, or even if you don't, we won't charge admittance. <laughs> Um, here in a little bit, I'm not sure when, Steve does have some communion made up and he will pass it out if you want him to. If you desire, if you didn't bring your own or something, he will supply you with that. And when we do have our communion meditation and uh, we have our communion meditation prayer, we'll take communion at that time. So without further ado, here comes Janet. We're going to sing some songs and praise the Lord. Amen? I tried to pick some songs again today that, that most of you will know without a book. So we're going to start. My page is moved. We're going to start with number 551, Soon and Very Soon. Father, Lord, we thank You for this day that we come together, Lord, and we worship You, Lord. We thank You for such a beautiful day that You've given us. Lord, we pray that You watch over us, keep us healthy, Lord, help this nation to overcome all that we're battling at this time. Lord, help us to be good stewards. Help us to be Your servants. Help us to be loving, kind, forgiving, gentle, all the things that you tell us to do in our lives. That's what we want to do, is be your servants. Lord, as we worship you, I pray that it's pleasing to you. I thank you for allowing us to come together, Lord, for you are a great God, and we thank you so much. And it's in Jesus' holy name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Our second song this morning is number 101, His Name is Wonderful, and we'll sing one time through the chorus.
Our next song is number 289. There shall be showers of blessings. And we'll sing the, the first and the fourth verse. Day to you all, and um, I know that those of us that have that have lost our mothers already, and they're with the Lord, that that we're thinking of them today too. So let's just let's just uh, everybody enjoy their afternoon today, and and uh, it's it's a beautiful day. It's a lovely, lovely Mother's Day. Amen. Our our communion hymn is number four. How great thou art. And we'll sing the first verse and the last verse. this time. Uh, I'm going to read a poem. It's 
called a mother's crown. Heaven lit up with a mighty presence as the angels all looked down. Today the Lord was placing jewels into my mother's crown. He held up a golden crown as my darling mother looked on. He said in his gentle voice, I will now explain each woman. The first gem, he said, is a ruby, and it is for endurance alone. For all the nights you have waited up for your children to come home. For all the nights by the bedside you stayed till the fever went down. For nursing every little wound, I add this ruby to your crown. An emerald I will place by the ruby for leading your child the right way, for teaching the lessons that made them who they are today, for always being right there through all life's important events. I give you a sapphire stone for the time and love you spent for untying all the strings that held them when they grew up and left. I give you this one for courage. Then the Lord added a garnet stone. I place a stone of amethyst, he said, for all the times you spent on your knees. When you ask if I had to take care of your children and them having faith in me. I have a pearl for every little sacrifice that you made without them knowing. For all the times you went without to keep them happy, healthy, and growing. And last of all, a diamond, the greatest one of all, for sharing unconditional love, whether big or small. It was your love that helped them grow, feeling safe and happy and proud. It could shift the darkest cloud. After the Lord placed the last jewel in, he said, your crown is complete. You have earned your place in heaven with your children at your feet. Proverbs 31, verse 25 through 26. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. I dedicate that to all the mothers, those who are here now, and those of us who have lost the mothers. This day is made special for all of them, and we just want to say... We appreciate everything our mothers have done for us. And at this time, we step forward to this table to take the emblems that represents Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us. The bread, which is His flesh. The blood, which is, the wine, which is His blood. At this time, after my prayer, I ask that you will take the bread and the wine at the same time with us and we'll have communion together. Lord Jesus Christ, it's in your name that I pray today to thank you for everything that you have given us, the strength that you give us to go through the situation that this whole world is in. Lord, without that strength, without your love and your caring, none of us would make it through this. It's your wisdom that we also ask, Lord, to help us to see the end of this when it does come. Because without your wisdom and your lessons that you've taught us through the Bible, we would not be here now. So, Lord, I'm just asking this all in your name. Amen. Let's take this all in God's name together now. Morning. as a uh, invitation song Lord I'm coming home it, it's 341 in the books and you probably don't have a book so it won't matter but if you do have a book it's 341
Then we'll have a closing song after the invitation song of uh, the chorus, This Is The Day. We'll just sing it one time. Um, I've kind of, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to grow long hair, because back in the 70s, that was very popular. And uh, I just, oh man, I begged to let, for mom and dad to let me grow my hair long, and now I don't have a choice. <laughs> it's getting longer and longer. I guess I could get Tamara to cut it for me, but uh, be careful what you wish for. I want to have you... Uh, <laughs> I want to uh, have you turn this morning to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15. I'm going to be reading from that in just a few minutes. Hearing a quarrel between her two young sons, a mother rushed into the kitchen. Eight-year-old Bobby and four-year-old Jackie were having a tug of war with the cookie jar. And only one cookie remained, and each boy thought it should be his. Taking the cookie jar from them, the mother calmly announced, I'll solve the problem for you. I'll eat the last cookie myself. The boys looked up at their mother in shocked unbelief. Then the four-year-old with a mischievous grin on his face said, Oh no, you won't, Mommy. Who ever heard of a selfish mother? For the most part, our mothers are and have been the most unselfish people we know, haven't they? This this morning we thank God, we thank God for our mothers, amen. Amen. Honk if you love your mother. <laughs> it wasn't overwhelming. I mean there was an overwhelming humping. I think most of you appreciated your mother's song. If you if you turn now to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter fifteen, verses twenty one through twenty eight I'd like for us to consider a, a woman who was an unselfish mother who had great faith in Jesus, and she's an example to us today. It reads, Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. You know, in the Gospels, Jesus does not often compliment people on their faith. In fact, as far as I can tell, he does it only twice, and both times he's referring to, to Gentiles. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, for example, he calls attention to a Roman centurion's faith. And then, of course, there's this Canaanite woman's faith here in Matthew 15, 28. Now this rare praise marks this loving mother's faith and it's worth examining. I want us to look at four aspects of her faith that apply not only to mothers, but really to all we who are Christians. And first of all, we see that, that great faith is self-forgetful. Great faith is self-forgetful. We get the idea that this woman is, is practically making a nuisance of herself. She's so concerned by her daughter's plight that she doesn't give a thought to herself. I remember an incident years ago when Charles was playing Little League Baseball. He was in the outfield and a batter hit a pop fly clear out to Charles and it hit him in the chest. He was just a little guy then and it knocked him right down and I'm thinking, oh wow, that, that ball hit Charles. Before I could even react, Tamara is running down to the field to take care of her little boy. She doesn't care what anybody thinks. She's not thinking about herself at all. Just her hurting son. And I think that's true of, of most mothers, and it was certainly true, I believe, of the mother in our lesson today. This woman is not a Jew like Jesus and his disciples. She's acutely aware that the Jews would generally consider her unworthy of consideration because, well, first of all, she's a woman, and women were, were not treated the same way back in that day and age and in that culture. Jesus actually changed that in many ways. But more than that, she's a Gentile. And so the, the Jewish people considered to be, uh, these people to be pagans. 
In spite of being aware of this likely prejudice, the woman's desperate concern for her daughter drives her to beg for Jesus' help. She's only thinking about her hurting daughter. You know, self-forgetfulness is very compelling if you think about it. It's, it's, it's humility in its purest form. Some people think shyness is a form of humility. If this mother had been merely shy, she could never have summoned the courage to call Jesus' attention to her daughter's trouble. Self-consciousness is, is just what it sounds like, being so conscious of oneself that social paralysis sets in. To the contrary, this mother has lost all self-consciousness in her overwhelming concern for her daughter. To have a great faith in Christ means that we will cease to be embarrassed about our faith in Jesus, no matter what the world may say or do. Secondly, great faith focuses on Christ's ability, not our own inability. Don't you suppose this mother had tried every possible remedy she could think of to help her daughter? Moms have this uncanny ability to troubleshoot problems with their kids. They just instinctively go down this motherly checklist until something works. I'm sure this Canaanite mother had done everything she could think of, everything she knew to do to help her beloved daughter, but nothing was working. In fact, her daughter seemed to get worse as time went on. The situation was desperate. She began to understand that if her daughter was to be restored, it was going to take someone far more powerful than she was. And then she heard about Jesus. She must have heard of the crowds that followed him. She heard rumors of his amazing miracles and healings. He was her last hope. She knew there was nothing she could do to relieve her daughter's suffering. But she had the faith to know that Jesus had the power to heal and cast out demons. Has it struck you that in spite of all of our science and technology, we still seem so powerless in these days of the coronavirus. There's so much conflicting news and advice about what should be done. For all of our modern confidence and braggadocio, disease, destruction, and death still stalk the land, and ultimately we are helpless on our own. Faith understands that ultimately we are weak and helpless as human beings, but Christ Jesus is all-powerful. He is worthy of our confidence. Third, great faith does not quit when obstacles interfere. Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us, Jesus' disciples urge with seeming impatience. We too often feel ourselves so pressed with gravely important matters that we don't wish to be disturbed by people with their problems. Jesus doesn't reject the woman, but neither does he help her at first. His mission, he says, it's first of all to the Jews. Not until the end of his earthly ministry will he commission his disciples to go out into all the world. Jesus' words to his disciples at first seem uncaring toward the woman. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Matthew 15, 24 tells us that. The woman, in desperation, kneels down and pleads for Jesus' help. His answer seems to us not just uncaring, but even insulting. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But the woman doesn't seem to take it this way. We can't hear the gentle tone of Jesus' voice or see the twinkle in his eye with the hint of a smile on his face, but I think that they're there. I think Jesus already admires her love and selfless concern for her daughter. He must surely have admired her well-spoken response to him. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This mother's faith was so great that no obstacle could cause her to quit seeking the help of Christ. Would we let the obstacles of this world keep us from faith? Fourth and finally, 
we see that great faith wins the victory. This Canaanite woman had so much faith in Jesus' ability to help that her faith resulted in the healing of her daughter. If you think about this, this mother won a victory over Satan through Christ Jesus. You see, her daughter was held in bondage to Satan and his demons. Like the hymn we sing, Faith is the Victory. That song is from 1 John chapter 5, 4 and 5, which says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The Canaanite woman, according to the times, had no right to ask Jesus for anything. She had no hold on him, but her faith in him. But it was enough to win. God wants you and me to win. As a mother or a father, as a disciple, as a Christian, he wants you to be victorious in the battles that truly count. Victorious over sin, Satan, and even death. It's only possible through Christ Jesus, God's Son. It begins with faith that leads to repentance, that leads to obedience and confessing Christ as Lord and Savior and being baptized into Him. Then His indwelling Spirit will empower you to live the victorious Christian life.